Chris, if you come here, we'll give you $150, which is about what you're worth. And then your mom would get pissed and say, he's worth way more than $150. But you guys are were probably pretty similar to me, even though Mitch probably thought he was gonna be a lottery pick because he's cocky and he's unrealistic. As I'm currently sitting in uh, Mechelen, Belgium. You're a professional basketball player, Mitch, and you can say that for the rest of your life. Chris and I can't say that. They were projecting me late second round. So, you know, I, I just turned down the opportunity. Is this NBA like an, a different an acronym of a, something I'm not aware of? I thought we were talking about oh. WNBA. I just know that whenever I go out to dinner with Lance Leipold or Bill Self, I ain't buying. They make enough to buy my dinner, right? Same with professional basketball player Mitch Lightfoot. When we go <laughs> yeah. out next time you're back, I, I am I am going to have alligator arms. Dad used to tell me all the time. He used to tell me all the time. Son, don't worry about the mules. Just load the wagon. Hey. College football tees, college basketball tees, whatever you need, Mercury has you covered with the best merch out there. We're talking about high quality clothing, inexpensive, and the best part is I have a 15% discount for everybody who goes and gets some right now. Use the code below, hit the link in the description, and go get your merch now. Use the code to get 15% off. What are you waiting on? Go do it. Chris, super pumped to be back in Kansas City this summer. I'm looking for some new spots to eat. I've heard great things about Modern Market for my family and friends. What do you know about it? Mitch, Modern Market is the easiest way to eat healthy in Kansas City. It's at 83rd and Corinth. I've tried just about the whole entire menu. I ate it for a week straight. Their pizzas, their Neapolitan pizza, their pepperoni pizza, everything has been absolutely fantastic. I highly encourage you to go on the website right now, modernmarket.com, and check out their menu. Again, it's at 83rd and Corinth. It is right in the heart of Prairie Village, Kansas. What about Modern Market allows you to eat healthy and eat clean? They make it taste good. I mean, it's simple as that. You know, I'm scared of anything green. I like my stuff red and blue. Everything I've had there has been absolutely fantastic. It really satisfies me, even though I do love the greasy stuff. You heard it here first, folks. Drop in at Modern Market and let them know Chris and Mitch sent you. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rock Talk Unplugged. I'm your host, Mitch Lightfoot, here with my co-host, Chris Tehan, and here with our mentor and former Kansas basketball player, Williams Fund member, Greg Gurley. Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Great to see you, boys. I miss you. It's been a while, man. I, I, uh, I'm across the pond, and then we just haven't been in your office every day like we used to be. I know. Those are always some good times. Mitch was actually one of my interns for a stretch during COVID. Didn't really do much, and nor did he probably learn a lot. But, uh, but yeah, uh, William's fun experience with Mitch Lightfoot. I, uh, I answered some calls, uh, emails. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole hell of a lot of work there. Yeah. Learned so made, much about the sports management world. Made a few liquor store runs for me. That's about it. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. We were all 21 at that point. You ain't, you ain't got to hide that one, Mitch. No, yeah, it's fine. It's legal. <laughs> Chris, take it off. Okay, well, hey, Greg, thank you so much for coming on. Obviously, we, we've spent a lot of time together, but let's dive in a little bit to just kind of how your career at Kansas went and how you've transitioned into being a Williams Fund uh member trying to get people to give money to the university and you obviously love the university do the color commentating for us on the radio so how is how has that transition been and kind of uh your ties just to kansas in general over the past couple of decades well first of all i'm extremely fortunate to be able to work for my alma mater the place i played at all that i mean i i wasn't in the fundraising business till about 2011 when i started looking into it and uh with uh Lou Perkins and then Shan Zinger and uh, didn't know if I'd be good at it. I've never really asked people for money outside of my parents. So it was kind of like, all right, we'll give it a shot. I'm a, I'm a pretty personable guy. We'll see how it goes. They know that I love the place and it's been a fun transition. I, I love what I do on both jobs, uh, able to raise money and build things like McCarthy Hall or a locker room renovation or whatever. It's cool to to know that you had a part of that. Um, so I, I, I love it. I, I think I'm, I get up every day excited about what I do. I, and, and as former players, um, you, you guys know as good as anybody, when you're done, there's a finality to it of something you've done your entire life and then you're out of it. And so the locker room, the bus trips, the plane trips, the hotel lobbies, the travel, whatever, the camaraderie is gone. And I still get that 
being around you guys and a new batch every year. It's very fulfilling. It's a fun job. Uh, get to work with great people. Um, Coach Self is is one of the is the best. I mean, he makes our interviews and our interactions so good because he's just like talking to your buddy at a bar. It's not, it's not like a, uh, I mean, again, you guys know it as well as anyone. He's, he's kind of a smart ass, somewhat self-deprecating and then uh, makes fun of me or what. Like it's, I enjoy that. You guys enjoy that. That's our kind of humor. And I think it plays well to the, to the audience and the listeners. So again, it's, uh, I mean, I'll never forget when McCarthy Hall was about 80% done, Mitch, Remember, Co- Coach Self had me come and meet you guys because that was kind of what my project or I was very involved in it. And I walked Mitch and Doak around with your families and kind of said, hey, this is where you're going to live. And that was cool to me because I think that's, real, that's the first time I met you, first time I met Doak. And being able to to have a hand in building something so cool that helped get you and get Doak and others is a very fulfilling part of my job. I, I'm pretty sure uh, McCarthy or not, I was going to come to Kansas. They had uh, they had the great Greg Gurley there, uh, the great Bill <laughs> Self. But uh, <laughs> but no, speaking of McCarthy, you had a, a big hand in uh, the creation of that, and and that's a pretty special place for for our guys, and it allows Kansas to really recruit off of that as well. Uh, talk about your involvement in it. Talk about uh, what went into McCarthy becoming a thing. Well, Ken McCarthy, one of our great donors, and his son Charlie's on the team now. His daughter miss uh, his daughter plays on the volleyball team, and and uh, it's it's a, a great Kansas family, uh, uh, Molly McCarthy, and and so it's he he came to us and, and and myself and Bill. We were on a golf trip, and basically said, "Hey, what do you, Bill? What do you need? You know, right now?" And he says, "I need new apartments for my guys," and then that started a conversation, which I don't know what the hell I'm doing. He t- he basically says, hey, Greg, when we get back, let's figure it out. And obviously, with the- Sean Lester was a massive part of it. I mean, he's the guy that knows how to run all the traps across campus and construction. Because I'll give you one hint. It's not easy building a building on campus because there's not a lot. I mean, taking over a parcel of land and building something permanent, is there's a lot that goes into it. And there involves hundreds of people. So I got a great education from architectural design to construction to everything. And Coach Self was a a massive part of it. Like he was in there picking out what color the carpet was and the sofas in the the main entrance. I mean, it was crazy. And it was very cool. Cost a lot of money. Uh, Got to learn about student housing and how that worked. But... The way, you know, talking to you guys on, you know, all of our players get recruited by all the elite programs, right? And all of us are pretty much the same. Facilities is what takes you over the top. When it's apples to apples, whether you're going to the SEC, Big 12, Big 10, whatever. But if you you got a nice locker room, you got, we all charter playing, we all do the same stuff. But if you have an over the top, nice place where you guys spend over 50% of your time, then that might put you over the top. And I think that's what McCarthy Hall does for us because, and, and, and I want you to speak of that, Mitch, like you were probably already coming. You're maybe a bad example, but for others that just go to a school and it's just a regular dorm, you know, with a bed and a cabinet and a shared bathroom, or I can have tall door jams, bigger toilet, nine foot shower heads, a barber shop, a basketball court, a game room, a rooftop deck, all that on campus, walk to all your classes, it's a home run. I, from my uh, perspective, we always use it as like such a recruiting like recruiting tool. Like we take them on visits and like the families wouldn't want to leave McCarthy because it was so cool. Like the movie theater, yeah. we would take the guys in, we'd be shooting hoops with them. They'd be, they'd be like, hey, let's stay here and shoot hoops. I'm like, dude, we do this for eight hours a day. Like, Let's go. Let's go explore Lawrence. Let's go. I'll show you some cool stuff. But they're they're always so infatuated with the fact that we have a fourteen million dollar building just for where the basketball players live, and then some select students. So like that's that's so special, and I, I think that's what puts us over the top against those other blue bloods like Kentucky, uh, UCLA, Duke. Uh, I know uh, Kentucky had a really cool 
cool dorm before Kansas did. And, uh, and us getting McCarthy Hall really helped us to take that step up, right? Well, quite honestly, we built McCarthy Hall because Kentucky has, it's called the Cole Lodge. And it's very nice, but ours is nicer. It's almost like it's way better to be the second guy that does it because you can take what they did and improve upon it and add stuff and be like, all right, that didn't really work over there. And so no question, we looked at that and said, well, we don't want to do it like that. We're going to do it like this. And I think we had a home run and our, and uh, you guys are the testimonials of, of how good it is. And, and you guys are our best. Once we get you, you're our best recruiters. Like when I was in school, I, not to brag, but I was, basically five and oh on hosting recruits because you had to sell them on Lawrence. It was Scott Pollard. It was Ryan Robertson. It was got Ray for friends and you had to sell them on Lawrence. Now you guys have the tools to say, this is the locker room. This is where we play. We're going to play in the Maui classic. We're on national TV. Everything's on TV now, but we're on the mothership a lot and CBS. It's like you, you use all those things and you guys are the salesmen that get the recruits there and having McCarthy Hall, I think only helps. Let's welcome our newest sponsor to the podcast, Shopify. Shopify has brought the cash register online and has helped millions of people sell billions of dollars of merchandise. But did you know that Shopify could help your retail store too? Get a serious upgrade to your point of sale system with Shopify. Shopify's POS is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, it has everything you need to sell in person. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify is meant for hug and play from marketing for everything from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is here to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up today for our $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Mitch, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash Mitch, all lowercase. Sign up for a $1 a month trial period at shopify.com slash Mitch. That is all lowercase. Bring your retail store to the next level at shopify.com slash Mitch. We can't wait to see you guys take your retail stores to the next level. Greg, so you said you were five for five on recruits. Talk a little bit about that. You had Rafe LaFrenz, Scott Pollard. Those are some huge names. How did you get them to come to the University of Kansas? And what did you guys do around Lawrence? Well, I was only a small piece of that, but they would put us with guys that they think that you can help get here. You know, Scott Pollard was an interesting case. He's one of my best friends. But at the time, he was very guarded and quiet and comes from a Mormon family. So it was kind of like, you know, when you guys came on your recruiting trip, you probably went to the wheel or the hawk or the bull or whatever to, you know, see college life, have a good time. Be like, I'm coming to Kansas because the hawk was awesome. You know, forget the coaches and the McCarthy all and all that. So many guys commit when they have a really good night. Right. So with Pollard, I remember we went bowling. I had him back at the at the the hotel by like 10, 10 p.m. The next morning, we go over to Coach Williams' house. And, hey, how'd it go? God, we love this kid. How was he? And I was like, well, you know, he was quiet. He was, seemed like he had a good time. And they're like, well, all right, like, what do you think? And I go, I couldn't really get a read. And they're like, well, you suck at this, Greg. And I'm like, well, I, I'm being honest with you. I'd love to tell you that I did an amazing job. And he committed to me at midnight at the Hawk. It just didn't happen. So he goes home back to San Diego and we were, we were recruiting against Arizona. So San Diego kid actually finished his high school career in like central Washington, uh, but ended up between Arizona and Kansas weather, all that. So I like to, you know, pat myself on the back because I got Scott Pollard, but I really wasn't that good because it was not, a memorable night just simply because he didn't really want to go do what you two probably did on your visit. Right. I went, uh, on my visit, I'll give, I'll give the people a quick insight. We, uh, we went to the cave on my, my adventure in Lawrence. And, uh, that's not a place that people really go anymore, but well, when no. I was there, it was a blast. I, I came from like a really small Christian school from high school. So I had no idea what I was getting into. And, Obviously ended up at Kansas, but it was one of the, the times of my life. 
Yeah, I mean, and so like, as you know, when you take recruits out, you want to have a good time, interact with everybody and, and make sure they feel at home. They're going to spend the next four years of their life there. So yeah, you just try to be personable and introduce them to a lot of people, the right people, and and uh, hope they have a good time because truly it's a crapshoot because they're going to go to the other really good schools and have an equally good time, if not better or worse, whatever. And then, you know, when Pollard eventually committed they were like hey good job and i'm like and then he shows up you know six eight months later and kind of spreads his wings and and uh was a way different guy as all of us who know scotty and it, you know i'd be remiss not to say it, it's a great story right now just 10 days ago two weeks ago he had a heart transplant and he's about to be able to check out of the hospital he's doing great uh, I went to Nashville a couple of weeks ago and saw him the day before the transplant. I was there when they told him he got a heart. It was a really cool experience for me. Obviously, an experience of a lifetime for him. And uh, he's got a long road ahead. But, uh, you know, but that's the, you know, this is 30 years ago since I played. And those are the stories that you guys will have with your teammates, hopefully. You know, I was telling our guys because I went from Nashville and I flew to Oklahoma City to be in Norman. And I was telling some of our guys, like, I hope that when one of your teammates has something like this, that you're there, because that's what it's all about. Yeah. And Scott, Scott is a great guy. We had him on the podcast earlier this year. I followed that. I followed his journey uh, pretty closely and had him in my thoughts and prayers. It's really exciting to see that how well he's doing. But let's bring this back a little bit to the recruiting side of things. You already talked about the arms race. That is the facilities that go into recruiting people. And that was huge through the 2010s to early 2000s. And then now you kind of bring into that. We talked about the camaraderie, bringing them out, seeing if they're a good fit for the culture of Lawrence. But now you pair that with NIL. So how much of a of a factor is nil in that is it more about hey it's not as much about hey let's get them out to the hawk get them out to the wheel but more about talking business is it something that you've seen change the complete dynamic of recruiting over your time here yeah you know i'm not a coach but i'm close to all of our coaches and that is definitely a question that comes up during the recruitment of a transfer a high school kid whatever what's your program like whatever we can only educate on how other guys have done we you know you're not allowed to say hey Chris, if you come here, we'll give you $150, which is about what you're worth. And then your mom would get pissed and say, he's worth way more than $150. And in your dad, her eyes, in her eyes, <laughs> in her eyes, you're worth $5 million a year. But uh, I think sorry, that Donna. way too, though. You knew I was going to bring Donna up at some point in this. She'll uh, love that. This, she, she, she wants that. She clip loves hearing it. people talk about her, doesn't she? This loves it. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it's changed things because what we talk about now or what we talked about in the past was, hey, come to Kansas, shot at a Big 12 title every year, shot at a national title, great facilities, best coach in college basketball, blah, 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 blah. Now you got to talk money. And now you're not just competing with Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina, Indiana, all these blue bloods. You're competing with anybody who has money. So throw Memphis in there, throw Houston in there, throw people that weren't considered, you know, blue bloods kind of out. I mean, it's still a thing, but it's about who has money and kids. You guys know who's an NBA player and who isn't. So in their heart of hearts, they know that like, all right, I'm really good, but I'm probably not. So I might as well take advantage of my situation now and maximize my earnings. However, I got to do it. They don't care about our tradition. They don't care about Dukes. They care about them, which can't really blame them. Nope. I, I don't, I don't know if I would have thought like that, but I don't, I don't know that for a fact. I went to school cause I knew that I got a top five program offering me a scholarship. It's 30 minutes away from my house. I didn't think there was no money. You didn't think about that. I thought about, Hey, I got a chance to win a national championship every year. I'm going to make my home in Kansas City. So why not go there? Like, it's going to help me in my career, whatever that is. But I'm different. But you guys are were probably pretty similar to me, even though Mitch probably thought he was going to be a lottery pick because he's cocky and he's <laughs> unrealistic. And, but, yeah, but, that's uh, I'm currently sitting in uh, Mechelen, Belgium. Lottery. Hey. 
You're a professional basketball player, Mitch, and you can say that for the rest of your life. Hey, I, I, I'll, Chris, I'll take what I can get. But uh, Chris and I, Chris and I can't say that. That was by Chris, choice. I'll give you twenty dollars to come play basketball. That was your choice. What, what were you going to be like a photographer? Or what were you going to do there? <laughs> no, I was. They were, they were they were projecting me late second round, so you know I, I just turned down the opportunity. Is this NBA like an, a different an acronym of a, something I'm not aware of? I thought we were talking about oh. the WNBA. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, speaking, obviously, there, we can't talk numbers NIL-wise, but how much different is it when, when, a, when a player wants to, wants to field himself to all these schools for the highest bidder? Like, obviously, you said schools like Houston, Memphis – is this because of football money getting involved? Is this what, – what's the, the really driving factor behind it? Is it a, a random donor that has millions of dollars that he's ready, what, willing to put on the line? Like what's the, what's the driving factor behind that? The answer is yes, all of the above. It can be anything. It can be – you know, it just doesn't matter anymore. In, in my 12 years on the job, I was always – educating our people that you can't give if you see mitch lightfooter at a restaurant can't buy him dinner don't get don't do anything the rules are the rules no 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 and then two and a half years ago those are all gone now you got to do something for it the 1-800 got junk or whatever but now they're coming to me like i thought you always said i couldn't do anything and i'm like well now i'm telling you different and you got to do it within the framework of how it's all set up but it's essentially what I told you you couldn't do. So that brings the world to you. Donors, you know, football money. People are excited about it, and that transfers on to basketball, vice versa. Whenever there's excitement about a university, you're going to find donors that want to be a part of it and want to have a personal relationship with Mitch Lightfoot and want to have them over for their house or have an appearance at a at a cocktail party with your biggest clients. Cause you're a, you know, you're Connor T is a great example. Connor is a, you know, Gordon Gecko of Kansas city now, right? You know, he's got great hair. He's, you know, greed is good with the T hand family, right? Oh yeah. A, we can say that one. We can say that yeah. one. Are we, are we going to edit that? Are we going to edit no, that? We're, we can't, we, we're good. As long as you don't say where we work from, we're good. Okay. No, but, but you know what I mean? You can have stuff, you can have events, dinners, cocktail, whatever, and have three players show up and compensate them for their appearance. So it's just, so schools in bigger cities, I guess, would have an advantage just simply because of numbers. You know, we're in a, we're in a lowly populated state with 26,000 students. So therefore our alumni base is very large. But it's not New York. It's not Chicago. It's not Houston. It's not, you know, so I guess that could happen. Now, our our donors are unbelievably generous to us as an athletic department. So it's just a matter of how you put it all together. You know, we're in the middle of a very, very large football stadium rebuild. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Costs keep going up, right? And anything you do. So then you throw NIL in it, and I've got to talk to my people about buckets to fill. So not to feel sorry for me, but when you go out and talk to people, it's difficult because some people love it. Some people don't like it. Some people don't want to have anything to do with it. Some people want to learn about it but not give to it. So my time in explaining how everything works is added to an already – pretty busy job. And then you got to, you got to get the money. You got to collect the money. You got to execute it, activate it. And then just do all that together. It's, it's a, it's a lot. And I think that is something that like people kind of were talking about early on through the NIL days, but it has taken away from people who do what you do. It's, it's trying to raise money for the university, trying to raise money for the athletic department. And there is two buckets to fill now. I mean, hey, if you're given the best facilities, it's a lot different than being able to give somebody a huge lump sum of cash, which these players are now using it as an insurance policy. You, you touched on a little bit earlier. You look at Nigel Pack going to Miami. Hey, Miami probably isn't that much of a step up from Kansas State at the time, performance-wise. Right. 
I would say it depends on the year, but you're going to give him a huge lump sum of money if some guy who doesn't see himself as a pro is an insurance policy. I'm going to cash my check now. And if I have the opportunity to go on and make more, then great. But if I don't, so it has been a driving factor. And I'm sure it definitely affects your job as trying to be like, hey, I, I want the I want to skid athletes, but I also want them to have the means to come here and be on the top level of performance, whether it's weight room, whether it's McCarthy, whether it's nutrition, those things, et cetera. Well, believe me, I'm really good at spending other people's money. Now, I got to convince those people to give it. And there's some people that have X amount. They're going to give you $100,000. Okay. Let's just use that as a number. And they're going to say, uh, figure it out. But I ain't giving you, I, and he's done that year and year and year. And then when NIL comes, is he going to give us 150 and 50 of it go to NIL, or is he going to continue to give us 150 of it goes to NIL? And then the university or the athletic department gets $50,000 less. Then you got to go out and make that up. And it's just a, it's a domino, you know, and it's, it's, uh, you, you, the answers are difficult because it kind of depends on who you ask, you know, cart before the horse, like football stadiums, massively important. Product on the field, equally massively important. Mm -hmm. Which one's more important? The donor's going to decide, right? So have you have you found like which which of those buckets are people more willing to to donate to? Are they are they more more in on the traditional facilities or do they understand the importance of, of getting the product on the field? It truly depends on the person. I would say it's all over the map. Some people are like, hey. You know, for a hundred years, Greg, you told me that we can't pay the players. So I ain't into it just because that was what they were engineered to believe. And changing people's opinions is sometimes difficult. Some people love the NIL because they have more of an interaction with the kids and there's, there's no more barriers. Um, and then they can go to their friends at the bar watching the big Monday game. Hey, I, uh, uh, so Mitch Lightfoot was out of the house for Sunday dinner and it was awesome. And he was great. We played, we played knockout in our indoor gym and my kids love him. And I was able to, you know, sponsor him or support him, whatever you want to call it. So some people like that. Some people don't. Some people are just like, Hey, I've been given to the university for a hundred years and I'm going to keep giving to the university. Great. So it is there's really not a good answer. It's all over the map. Before we get back to Mitch and Chris, I got to tell you guys about the newest sponsor of the Rob Chalk Unplugged podcast, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to fire on sports. And my favorite part is the community place, playing alongside people like Meek Mill and Sugar Sean O'Malley. You can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Conference tournaments are here, which means the biggest moments in college basketball are getting closer. Be a part of the action on Prize Picks for both men's and women's college basketball. Prize Prizepix even offers injury insurance so that your entries can stay in even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player projection won't count against you and the rest of your entry stays live. I mean, that is looking out for the users. Prizepix is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. And on Prizepix, you pick players instead of teams, so if you feel like you know sports pretty well, you can make tons of money. Download the Prizepix app today and use code ROCKCHALK for a first-time deposit match up to $100. That's code ROCKCHALK. R-O-C-K-C-H-A-L-K -K, Rock Chalk for a 100% deposit match up to $100. The link is also in the description for you to click for a 100% deposit match up to $100 with code Rock Chalk. Go play prize picks today. Is that Come so? We'll, we'll switch this over to basketball a little bit just because we have we've been we have been talking about NIL and I think we've hit all the bases, but it's also something that you can kind of see on the court this year, maybe just based off of kind of our skid over the last couple of games. Has that kind of taken away from the Kansas tradition? I mean, when me and Mitch were there, you look at guys like Devontae Graham, you look at guys like Ochai Abaji, they played strictly for the fact that I love Kansas. I'm going to go out there and give it my all. I'm going to go out there. My tradition is what I'm playing for. I'm not playing for the money. Has that been something that I know you can't put words in coach's mouth, but has it been something that has been a concern to the university for the fact that, hey, these guys are here for a check? They may not care about the tradition and how much we love the university. So has it affected the on-court, on-field product that you've seen just based off of kind of rumblings that you've heard behind the scenes? Well, I, I mean, the examples you gave are great. Devontae, uh, uh, Frank, 
guys that played four years, Ochai, guys like that stuck around. I think if they were around during the transfer portal and NIL, I don't know if Frank would have been a senior here and won a, a, a national player of the year. He might have, but nowadays, and I'll get to your kind of to the answer of your question more because your, yours, yours was more financial. I'm going to go more like transfer portal wise, which has a financial yep, yep. angle to it. So, uh, Frank was part of a great recruiting class. So he didn't play right away. Thomas Robinson's a great example. Thomas mm -hmm. didn't really play much for two years because there was pros in front of him. Does Thomas Robinson stay, which would have a money angle to it? Those are the things we're never going to know. But so now when you look at guys that come and they're not coming for money, they come yep. and then the money shows up. Uh, sometimes it's greater than they thought. Sometimes it's less than they thought. It's by no means a pay for play, but it's a, uh, has it changed things? Sure. I, I, but I think it kind of changes things more in April and May. So now the really, really difficult part for coaches is they got to build their roster before everyone else. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a speed thing because you got to get a kid in. So let's use Dalton Connect, who's at Tennessee now, or Nick Timberlake or whoever. We don't know anything about them. Last year, we knew nothing about either one of those guys, right? Dalton Connect was at Northern Colorado. Nick Timberlake was at Towson. They come to town and you got to make a decision after watching their film, meeting their parents or whoever in three days, let's say, right? Because they're going other places and you got to make a really, really big decision quickly. Sometimes you make the right one. Sometimes you don't. Uh, so money is never the, uh, uh, carrot, but it happens when they get there. So I don't know how I answered your question, but there, it, it's a much more complicated recruitment when you talk about NIL and you throw the money in there because you got to do it pretty quick because if you don't offer a kid right away and someone else sees something that you don't, and then. So they go there and then you get another kid and you get a big kid. And once you get the big kid, your current big kid leaves and you got to go get another big kid. And so it's a, yeah. it's a, a jigsaw puzzle, a domino, whatever analogy you want to make. It's, it, it's changed the way springtime goes. Like once the season is over, it's not like, well, we signed four kids in November, Mitch Lightfoot. Yudoka and four other guys. We're good. No, it's, you know, you sign high school kids, three or four of them, and you might have to sign four transfers. And I, for, I forgot about the transfer part of it. I mean, the one-year transfer does make it insane. I mean, when me and Mitch were playing there, I think after our freshman year, we had five transfers that had sat out a whole year. And so right. they watched what we did. And our sophomore year is another example. is like we didn't have a great year in 2018, 2019, but there wasn't an easy way out. So most people were there to ride and die for the University of Kansas. So that does take another thing. And then obviously money on the side. I think that money isn't a driving factor, as you said, but hey, if you're getting paid X amount here and then you maybe only got 12 to 15 minutes a game, you weren't happy with your role. And then a Houston or a Baylor comes in and goes, hey, we'll offer you almost double that and promise you 20 minutes. It is something that people are going to think about pretty easily. And for a lot of people, it's going to be a pretty – easy thought to be like, Hey, I don't have to work for this. This is already what happens. I think I deserve this another place instead of realizing, Hey, I need to improve on myself to be able to get this opportunity at this university. So you did answer my question. You brought up an interesting point for, I think everyone to kind of think about as we're looking at, you know, the, the spring window that will open up here at the end of March and or, or early April, depending on when the, when the season ends. And if you're looking at it in football right now, we're trying to keep guys staying and that we have a bunch of great players out here that, 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 portal opens again in in may right and so it, it yeah, is, it is and, a, yeah i'm glad you mentioned because i was going to say basketball is one thing think about football like 85 scholarship players and and it's weird in football there's essentially two deadlines which makes no sense you can't you know the, the how deadlines work is you got to have one of them right <laughs> and, and it was like right before the college football championship in early january and then there's another one in may 
I understand why they do it because it's after spring and kids want a chance. I, I didn't, I didn't get to play in the spring game. Should I come back? It's stupid. So I get it. But having two deadlines makes Lance Leipold's job and every other football coach's job even more difficult because they're, they're having to manage a roster of 85 instead of 15 in college basketball. So I don't envy them. They deserve their money. Uh, I just know that whenever I go out to dinner with Lance Leipold or Bill Self, I ain't buying. They make enough to buy my dinner, right? That is true. Same, same, with, prof- the- same with professional basketball player Mitch Lightfoot. When we go <laughs> yeah. out next time you're back, I, I, am, I am going to have alligator arms. Professional. <laughs> speaking <laughs> speaking of the one the one uh, one time transfer policy, in in my eyes, I, I I think you're exactly right. Guys, they 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 struggle. Guys like Thomas Robinson, guys like Frank Mason don't don't play until in their first years. Like or me, you don't play a lot until actually you just don't play a lot. But yeah, you didn't play much. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, guys that don't have a chance to really grow in their roles, I think I think that's the thing that people are missing from college sports is the is the storyline. You have the the Ochai's, you have the the Dave McCormick's, like the guys that have that been in college, have grinded, have have really grown in their role and really established a relationship with the fan base. And you're just losing that now because as soon as something goes wrong, people can up and go to the next school. Well, it, it's it's happened in sports over time. You know, we look back to Kurt Flood was the first free agent in baseball, and fans were just up in arms. Well, free agency means they can go anywhere, but. We're basically in free agency in college basketball, college sports. Let's just call it like it is. We'll get over it. It's going to happen. That the, the, it's already the two the toothpaste is out of the tube, right? It's going to. It has already happened. I don't know how you reel it back in. Kansas fans, Duke fans, they're like, oh, God, we're so used to the to the Jalen Wilsons and the Frank Masons that are there for four years. Well, hey, sorry. It, it, it's, it's out of our control. These are the rules. Kids are going to do what they're going to do. Families are going to do what they're going to do. And it just, I hate the term. It is what it is, but get used to it. And so I'll, I'll kind of transition this back to the team this year. So we can talk a little bit about kind of our woes and kind of what's going on. But so you also talk about the transfer portal. You're looking at a team like you add Hunter, you add a Nick Timberlake, and you're only taking their stats from their former school. The system can be a completely different system. So on paper, these schools are looking great. You look at a Michigan from two years ago. They were a number one team in the nation, ended up falling off. You look at Kansas this year. We were expected to be the outright favorite based on paper, based on what these kids have done at other schools. So it is something that these guys don't have the camaraderie, haven't played together. They don't have the chemistry. So it's more of a crapshoot of, hey, will this work? Will this not work? And then the fans get upset because, hey, this is we didn't recruit it. We didn't do whatever. It's like, no, the pieces just kind of didn't fit because we've never we didn't have three years for these guys to learn the system, play in the system, get comfortable. Is that something you're seeing? Like you look at a Nick Timberlake and he's now just getting his opportunity to kind of feel comfortable. Is it a little too a little too much too or a little too little too late, you know, kind of thing like that? Is that kind of what you're seeing from the team where we have all these pieces, they look great, but maybe they just haven't meshed as well because there hasn't been the opportunity to grow these players over the last three, four, two years, wherever you want to call it? Well, let's go back to our two national championship years and talk about the year before the national championship years. 07, we we lose, and all those guys are mad. And they all come back, with the exception of Julian Wright, to win a national championship. And it worked. They had chemistry. They had camaraderie. They had all that. Mm -hmm. 2022, what happened the year before the national championship, Chris and Mitch? We got boat raced by USC in Indianapolis. And what did Bill Self say after the game? We need to get more athletic. We need to get deeper. We need this, 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 and this. Like, basically ran you guys down, right? You guys suck. You're not good enough. And I need to go find other guys. But he didn't. The only guy he added really was Remy, right? Yeah. Now, we had Jalen Coleman, Lands, and Joe. That was the first year of the transfer portal and great players. But, you know, it is what it is. That's who won the national title. You got older. You got more experience. You had chemistry. You add Remy to the mix. Great. Win a national title. It's a great story. 
So that being said, to your original question, our team hasn't had that opportunity. Mm. A lot of guys left. You had three returners, right? And one of them didn't plan. You had, well, excuse me, three. Yes, you had Dewan, KJ, and Kevin, and Zach's redshirting. That's it. So you got to mold everyone together. We have less scholarship players, meaning we have less depth because of the NCAA stuff. You got Arterio Morris, who's no longer with the program, and you got Zach, who's redshirting. So instead of 13 scholarships, you got nine. And then you got a, that bench is made up of some freshmen and some fifth years, but the bench has been a struggle. So guys had to play a ton of minutes in November and December. We had a great non-con, right? We lost one game yep. against a really good Marquette team. So now we're in the dog days of the Big 12, as you guys well know. Saturday, Mondays, travel, and it sucks, right? And we're losing some games we shouldn't lose. So, yeah, depth, chemistry, uh, injuries, it's all piling up. And we're extremely spoiled and extremely greedy as Kansas fans and alums. Tuesday sucked. BYU, that was awful. We're not used to losing in our house, and especially losing that way. Give them a ton of credit. They were great. Everything boiled over in that second half. Missed free throws. Get outscored by 30 from the three-point line. Like, all that being said, it should hurt. And, and, and I think we're going to see a different team on Saturday. Although we've struggled on the road and Baylor's really good. I, I just, uh, it happens. You know, you put yourself in those positions. It sucked losing to USC in Indianapolis. It stuck. stuck with you guys for a while. I'm sure it did. And that summer, you guys were old, you got old, and you stayed old, and you go and win a national title. That's probably not going to happen anymore, right? Like the one guy that I was surprised came back after that, because you remember Jay Will? Jay Will wasn't very good at the end of that season. He was bad against USC. Attitude on both sides were all kind of like, man, what's he doing? But you know what he didn't do? He didn't quit. He didn't just transfer. Jay Will took it. And he's like, all right, I got to be better. Yeah, I can blame the coaches on some of this stuff. I can blame my teammates. But he's got to get better. And he did. And he won a national title. Will we see that again? I just don't know. I uh, I, I think about that. And, and that's a very special point. Like, obviously, those guys came back and, and, and they grind and, and they, they make it up and, and they go – win a national championship. They, they have a chance to be national player of the year and stuff like that. But I want to take it a little bit back to, like you said, playing on the road. This is a dog days of the big 12. Like you, you don't get it, especially with the new teams, you don't get a chance to play everybody twice. Like that's how much does the fact that we, we go play at somewhere. And if you lose on the road, well, Hey, guess what? That's the only time you're going to see them this year. Uh, Better luck next time. Got to go play a completely different team to maybe get back with the chance to, to win a piece of the Big 12. Like, how, yeah. how much different hope is that? the team you lost to loses to another team. Like, it's not in your hands anymore, as Mitch is alluding to. It's not in your hands to be like, hey, I lost one on the road. We got him in Allen. It's like, hey, we lost on the road. We got to live with that one until maybe we play him next year. We don't – you don't really know. Yeah, and here's the frustrating part, because I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth a little bit like I do a lot. You know, you're exactly right. The unbalanced schedule sucks. But – we lost some gimmies on the road. Sorry, Central Florida. Sorry, West Virginia, that I'm calling you a gimme or, or a must win or a should have won, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Those right now are killing us because we're right there with before the loss against BYU. If we win in Morgantown and we win in Orlando and we win in Manhattan, you know, and we just didn't. Nothing against them. They played better. We lost. I get it. You don't get West Virginia at home. You don't get Central Florida at home. You go on the road to Texas Tech and get boat raced. You don't get them at home. Uh, Iowa State, we were right there. We don't get them at home. Now, other teams have the same deal. It's not like, woe is me, Kansas. It's all. It all works out in the end. But we're creating a narrative that, it sucks for us because now I, I get it. We're not going to win the big 12 this year and we're pissed, right? It's our own doing. Um, now 
some of the, I say all that, we do get, um, it makes it more difficult on us when we have those Saturday Mondays. ESPN wants us on prime time. So we play Baylor at five o'clock on a Saturday, a couple of weeks ago, right? Then we get on a plane the next day at noon to go to Lubbock. We did that the weekend before we played at home and then had to go to Manhattan, not a plane, but it's still travel is travel. And two weeks in a row, plus the Baylor game was at five o'clock. So you guys know how much energy you, you put out there during yeah. the game. And then you got to go home, have a, have a, a, a meal or whatever. You, you, you're still kind of amped up. You go to bed at midnight, you wake up, have practice at 10 in the morning. You're on your way to love it. It sucks. I had to do it too. I had to watch the Super Bowl in Lubbock, Texas, as opposed to watching at my boy's house, but we won. So chiefs, great, whatever. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's dog days, but it's, there's dog days in the pack 10, pack 12, big 10 AC. I get it. This is not a problem on us, but we're on a Jayhawk podcast and it is what it is. So yeah, we're going to create a narrative. However we want to create it. Bottom line is we got to win the games we're supposed to win. And that's how we've won so many big 12 titles. And we just didn't do it this year. Being that you have a little bit behind the scenes access to the guys, you go to practice, you're around Coach Self, you're around our coaches. What is the vibe around the locker room? What is the what is what are we doing moving forward? What are we going to change? What is what is Coach focused on? Well, that's a great question, and it's in normal years. I think when you had options, you'd be like, "All right, we can do this, this, or this. We can change." I don't really know what we can change right now, and it's a numbers thing. You know, when you have nine scholarship players and one of which is hurt, so that takes you to eight, not great at math, but you got to start five guys. You got three guys on the bench, right? I mean, it's, it's limited. And, and of those three on the bench, you're talking, Jamari's shown some bright spots. El Marco's shown some bright spots. Parker Brown, but they're not world beaters. You know, I don't know, plug and play something new. The, the, the attitude's great. Everyone's positive. Uh, you got to be at this time. I mean, if, if, once you put your chin down, you're beat already. So I would, I don't think there's much we can change. It's just a matter of being more efficient, taking care of the basketball, guarding the three point line. I mean, I can say all the, the, the triggers that we're just not doing right now, but it's easy for me to say it and for you two to say it. It's much harder to get it done. And I, I truly believe that Dewan, KJ and Hunt are a little tired. I mean, we, we, we rode them hard in November and December, simply out of necessity. Because why? Bill Self likes to win. Kansas fans like it when we win. Yep. Like he didn't. He didn't do this substitution pattern like we're doing now in November and December because we were playing Tennessee, we we're playing Marquette, we we're playing Kentucky, we we're playing Indiana. Like you want to lose those games? No. So not saying we would have, but yeah, you want to put your best foot forward, right? So. In answer to your question, Mitch, it's a great attitude. Everything's everything's good. It's just we're we're a little uh, battered right now. You know, we got it. we're mentally and physically. So it's next man up mentality. It's all that coach speak and all that crap. That's what you got to do. I mean, I don't know what else you can do. And and I I think as as you said, it's just like hey, you got to double down on everything. And I think that right now. Everyone's wanting to change here. They want Dewan to shoot the ball more. They want KJ to shoot the ball more. I think that, hey, this is the team you're going to get. And can we go in night in and night out and execute the things that we have to do? Play defense. Our ball screen defense hasn't been great. Obviously, guarding the three-point line hasn't been great. So there won't be any tweaks to the way that we play the game of basketball. We'll be more focused on, hey, the stuff that we're doing, we got to do it harder. We got to play yeah. better. We got to we got to mitigate all of the all the mistakes that we have made due to lack of experience playing this system. So I think it will be something that we're going to see the same team come out every single week. And when we've been good, we've been great. We I mean you we look at the Texas the game. Teams that, we beat the best teams in the country. We can still go on a run cuz we get up for great teams we play poorly against teams maybe back in the pack and yep. and you guys know it again. You guys are a part of several different types of teams. You can hang your hat on something and still know that if this, if offensively you're bad, we're really good defensively and we can get through those offensive struggles with our defense or vice versa. And 
I don't know if we have that. We don't have like one thing mm. we do great. And we for sure don't have two things we do great because you can't hang your hat on. Like BYU was great the other night because what did they do? They took away the over the top that we've seen 5 million times to Doak and Cole and Thomas and everybody landed. And or to Mitch about once a year where they threw it, they set a play actually up for Mitch to throw it over the top so he could he could get fouled and miss a couple free throws. But we don't do that as much. <laughs> but when <laughs> when a team takes something away from you, what is your plan B? And that's been our our big struggle. I think that's what we miss Kev the most. Like he he is yeah. he is the uh, I think the most ability to go get it on his own out of out of the guys yeah. that are that are on our team. And when you don't have the ability to throw it to, to Hunter in the post and, and play out of a ball screen with him, then, then what do you do secondly? And, and like I said, without him, it, it hurts us. It, it turns our team into a jump shooting team and, and, and puts a lot of pressure on Johnny. And it, put, it puts a lot of pressure on, on guys like El Marco, Dewan. I mean, even KJ, we're, we're having to have him shoot the ball when, when that's not what he's comfortable doing. And when we were really rolling and Kevin was really rolling, he could – bring it up on a break and there'd be three guys in front of him and he'd figure a way out to get to the line or get a layup. We don't have that now. And Kevin was attempting eight to 10 free throws a game and shooting them at a high clip. That's why his scoring was up because Kevin's not a, 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 an immensely talented scorer. He's smart and he can get to the rim and he scores by getting to the free throw line and getting layups. He's not going to just come down and beat you off the bounce and pull up from three that's not his game, but his game is getting 22 and eight and six assists and drawing nine fouls. There's a, there's a science to it. And now we don't have that. It's not Nick. It's not Johnny. Dewan to a degree, but we don't get to the free throw line very much and kind of a good thing after Tuesday night, but we don't get to the free throw line enough. Um, we don't, we, without Kevin on the floor, we don't, do enough, so we need him back. And, and Final I think thing it's more Greg. of a matchup thing as well. Like when we when we don't match up well against team BYU is a terrible, terrible matchup for us. I mean, we haven't done a good job guarding the three point line, and not saying that's something we have to do. But you're going to play a top three team in the country in 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 percentage and just in the fact that they're going to chuck them up. I think that if you really look at it, this, is why I've been telling people who ask me the question: if we go into March with good matchups, we can make a run, no doubt sure. about that. But if we do have some bad matchups, it's definitely not going to go in our favor. And it's got to be some things that we're going to have to tighten up. And we're going to have to have a great performance where we shoot the ball well and everything kind of has to go right. And there, if we match up well, things can go wrong. And we're still Kansas. Coach Self will will us to a win. So that's kind of my take on this year and kind of everything going forward. These next three games will tell a lot going into the Big 12 and into March Madness. Unfortunately... Unfortunately, you're 100% correct, and you had to use the word if a lot, and you're not wrong. A lot of things have to go right for us to win, and that sucks because we've never had to say that before, but you're, you're spot on. Last question for you, Greg. I wanted to talk, Obviously, we talked a little bit about him, but Johnny Furphy coming out of the scene hot, having one of the, the best years we've seen out of a freshman. Do you think that we have a chance to see him for two years at Kansas or see somebody that – is going to take a lot of convincing to, to come back and, and, and maybe play a sophomore year? It's a great question. Uh, I don't know. I mean, everyone, as you, as you get on social media, mock drafts and whatnot, all have him, you know, very high, or at least in the first round. Um, I hope he comes back because I love him, and I think our fan base loves him, our coaches love him, and we see how good he is. And uh, – we're going to be selfish and biased that he needs another year. <laughs> Does he? If you're going to be the, a top 20 pick, I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I don't think – a lot of times I would say that guys should come back to improve their stats. Some will say if he's going to be a top 20 pick now, you got to go because the NBA, they don't really worry about that first year or two. They want to develop you and know. So – I sure hope he comes back. A uh, lot's got to happen. Um, uh, I uh, uh, He can be the nucleus to a team. I don't want to talk about next year yet, yeah. but the nucleus could be there with what we've signed. But uh, sticking on this year, I just want to see him have a strong finish and, and make a nice run. 
Moral of the story is, folks, go donate to Jayhawk NIL. We can keep these guys around and keep uh, keep our Hawks at the top of the Big 12. Uh, Greg, we appreciate you coming on. It's been great having you on. Chris, you have done a great job. We will see you guys next time.